What is up everyone, Mark here. Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna to be going over my top seven songs for MGP Heat 3. And this was actually a very surprising heat for me. A lot of the songs that I didn't think I would like so much really did impress me here. And in my opinion, this heat is almost as strong as Heat 1. This is a really impressive selection of songs that we have here. Let's kick things off with the number seven spot, which is Someday. And this is a song that I definitely didn't like so much during the snippet, but to be honest, I actually liked the full thing. Do I have some of the same reservations I had after hearing the snippet? It, yes, but also this is a pretty good song. It has pretty nice lyrics. It sounds good It's a song that I would listen to if I'm just relaxing really I think the only thing that puts it in my number seven spot compared to the other six songs on this list It's just that it isn't as strong as the other ones and that's really what it boils down to right? This is not a bad song again. The lyrics are pretty good. The song sounds really nice I like a lot of elements in it But I just don't feel like this is the winner of this heat for me And I gotta say the other songs on this list are really really strong So unfortunately this song just wasn't the one that I felt stood out the most and just didn't have that extra impact for me. But before we move on, I do want to say that there are a lot of things I like about this song. One thing I didn't mention yet is the instrumental, which sounds great. The instrumental here is actually really nice. It uses a lot of different instruments that we just don't hear in MGP or even in Eurovision, and it has a very Caribbean vibe that makes it stand out to me. And also those little vocals in the beginning and end of the song, that voice saying someday, it kind of makes the song feel a lot less stale. I thought it was a nice thing to begin and end the song with. So for me, the song is going to get a 7 out of 10. So with that, let's move on to my number six spot on this list, which is Skrillex, Love Again. And this was actually a song that I was going to rank a bit higher, but I just felt like the other songs grew on me a bit more. And for me, the song actually is pretty good. I like the campiness of it. I love how Eurovision it sounds. It really does sound like something you would hear in Eurovision back in the 2000s, which is something I really like. Definitely gives this song a unique identity in this heat and also in MGP. I think this is the only song that we have that sounds remotely like a song that you'd hear in like Eurovision 2008. Big props to this one for doing something different like that. And there are a lot of things I like in this song, in particular with the vocals. I thought the vocals were really good, and I hope that those vocals are going to translate well to the live stage, just because I feel like some of these notes are pretty challenging for anybody, and so I hope that Skrillex, not Skrillex, Skrillex, is able to hit some of these notes, because I think that that can really push this song into the final. As it stands, the song itself overall is pretty, I don't want to say derivative, but definitely is a bit too much of a throwback, and doesn't really stand out that much to me otherwise, and what it really boils down to as well is that the other songs I just like more, and the other songs just have grown on me more than this song has. And yeah, I just like my top five a little bit more. But this song, again, is still pretty good. Not one I think is totally amazing, didn't blow my mind or anything, but I do like it. I, again, I love the campiness of it. I love how it reminds me of old Eurovision. So for me, this song is going to get an 8.5 out of 10. I hope it impresses me live. So with that, let's move on to my number five spot on this list, which is Masterpiece. And honestly, this song is pretty good. I ranked it a little bit low when I heard the snippet, just because it sounded really generic, and I was like, okay, another typical standard love song, whatever. But hearing the full thing did change my mind a little bit. This song still isn't super unique to me. It still is a lovey-dovey kind of song, but it has so much going for it that I don't mind that lack of uniqueness that much. A lot of these songs, you can argue, aren't the most unique overall, and that's why that's not really going to factor into my rankings here. At the end of the day, these rankings are based on my personal preference, my personal connection with each of these songs, and just how much I like them, and this song is really good to me. I really love the chorus, the bridge, and that little guitar riff towards the end, and I gotta say, the vocals are really good here. They really impressed me, and I hope they sound just as good live, because if so, this can qualify. Again, I don't think I think it is as strong for me as my top four, but this is still a really good song with really good vocals, and I think it has a lot of potential. I think the only downside for this song for me is the lyrics. The lyrics are a little bit generic. This is not meant to break the mold in any way, but for me, this song is going to get a 9 out of 10. With that, let's move on to my number four spot on this list, which is Break It. And this one is a great song. One I can see myself singing in the shower, one I can see myself singing at 3 a.m., and a song that I think can definitely become a fan favorite, and probably is a fan favorite by the time I upload this. This song was really great throughout, and the chorus is really catchy. I have had this stuck in my head for a while. Again, the song is really, really good. The only thing that really keeps it lower than the other three for this list is that this song is missing, for me at least, just a bit of a crescendo. Now, you might disagree with that, which is totally fair, but for me, I feel like the song didn't really ramp up that much in the final 30 seconds or so. I feel like it really could have used a stronger last chorus. I was actually surprised when the song ended. I was like, wait, it's over? already. I really wish that there was some extra little something, maybe another like big high note or just a little something there to really make the song feel more impactful by the end. I just feel like that extra little something towards the end would have really pushed it over the edge for me, would have made it one of my qualifiers. But as it stands, I feel like the song doesn't have quite the same impact towards the end as the other songs on this list do, as my top three do in particular. And that's the only reason why it isn't ranked as high. But the song is still really good. For me, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I think it is wonderful. I love the chorus. I love the vocals. I love everything about it, except the fact that it just doesn't take me any 
anywhere by the end. It just feels like it isn't finished. I might be the only person who feels that way, but it's just one thing I wanted to point out. And with that, let's move on to my number three spot, which is Triumph. This song is really good, a little bit done before, but a great song nonetheless. And the last chorus for me is fantastic. The verses here are really great too, and I feel like it all just comes together by the end. All the bridges and the verses and the chorus, it all really works for me. And I feel like this is probably going to be the dance track for MGP this year. Unfortunately, since Ella did not qualify, we have been lacking some serious dance tracks other than, of course, Geronimo. And I really feel like this is that song that I think can really stand out and get us on our feet in MGP. Again, the only thing that might be a little bit of a nitpick is just I've heard this song many times before, but the song is still great. I still love it. And I really am looking forward to seeing it in MGP. So for me, this is going to get a 9.5 out of 10. I really want this to qualify. I really want to see this live. And I think this has potential to be a total standout in this competition. So with that, let's move on to my number two spot, which is Not Meant to Be. This was way better than I was expecting, to be honest. I think I love almost everything about this song. It just really worked for me for some reason. And I guess you could say, Mark, what are you talking about, right? Like, you just said all these other songs are not unique, and yet you're putting this song super high. Yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. But this song, I just like a lot. Even though the song has pretty standard lyrics, the song just sounds so, so good. And the vocals are just so impressive to me that I feel like it really makes up for that. This song, for whatever reason, I don't know what it was, just works with my brain. I do love the song a lot, and it went straight to my national final favorites playlist which is a playlist that i do have one other thing i want to note before we move on is that last bridge really brought the whole song together for me leading up to that last chorus and I cannot wait to see this on saturday for me this gets another 9.5 out of 10 with that let's move on to my number one and you probably guess what this is this is freya this has pure winner vibes i love this song especially that instrumental break towards the end and the only little thing that bugged me was the fast choruses in the beginning and i did see a lot of comments below the video of this song people saying i wish the choruses were longer. I wish the other choruses were like the last chorus. And you know what? I kind of agree. But the thing is, that didn't bother me so much with future re-listens. On first listen, it was a bit jarring. But after that, I got used to it. And the song quickly became one of my favorites, if not my favorite, of all MGP. The song is so catchy, so fun, and it really just feels so unique to Norway and their culture. I not only love Norse mythology, but I do love references to a country's culture, to their history and music. That just really makes the song stand out even more to me. And that instrumental break sounds so specific to Norway. That feels very Viking, very Scandinavian, and for me, that's the kind of thing that I want to see in Eurovision. This song really impressed me. Maria did not disappoint, and I am just so excited to see the song live. I feel like this is a potential winner for MGP, and maybe even for Eurovision. A little too early to tell, sure, but this can definitely be at least top 10 in ESC, and yeah, just really cannot wait to see how this is live. Again, staging and live vocals really can determine a lot, so we shall see. But for now, this is my number one spot for Heat 3, potentially my number one for all of MGP, and with that, I'm going to give this song a 10 out of 10. So that has been my review of the seven songs for Heat 3. Again, I was really impressed by this heat. This is really strong, and I just cannot wait to see how all of these acts perform on Saturday. So excited, so happy about this heat. And with that, thank you all so much for watching. I know some of you might be from my Monoskin review, so I just want to clarify that this channel will cover anything music-related, Eurovision-related, and just pretty much all things in between. I am a huge fan of Eurovision, and that is something I love talking about, so there will be more Eurovision videos in the future. Also, there will be more Monoskin videos in the future. There will be more Panic! at the Disco videos in the future. So just wanted to clarify that in case you're confused about all the Eurovision content. But regardless, I hope you stick around and I really appreciate all of your likes, comments, subscriptions, and support. And with that, thank you all so, so much for watching and I will see you all next time.